are still actually just started last week about the book of First Thessalonians. This is a sermon series. You know what? It's so good to 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 preach on the whole letter or book of the Bible because of that. We won't miss a thing. Sometimes if I'm going to just pick on my favorite verse or topic, I'll pick on those things that would be helpful for me and also could just tickle your ears. But when you preach the Bible in a series, whatever that verse or that passage or that book or that letter tells us, we have to tackle that and we have to learn. Even if it is hard, even if, even if it's so painful to ears, to our ears, we would hear that. And that's what we do, verse by verse, from First Thessalonians chapter 1 to chapter 5. All right. Uh, welcome to this couple. Are you first time here? Uh, welcome. Good to see you here. Any first time we're in the room right now, I would like to welcome you. If you're joining us through online, you are joining Life Expressions Church. Sunday service. I'm Pastor June, and I'd love to welcome you. And I hope wherever you are, may you just experience the presence of God. We're missing some people here today because of sickness. Jeff, uh, Joe, also uh, taking or taking care of his dad and my wife. I can imagine my wife jumping, dancing inside her room. Uh, Worshipping with us. I miss you, lovey. Get well soon. Wow. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. You know what? If only my wife would be, uh, would be asked if, he, if she would come. She would come. But uh, she'd rather stay home at the moment. Get well soon. Anyway, if you have a loved one here or relative who's sick at the moment, we remember them in prayer. Later we will pray for them, okay? So I believe this time, this season, sudden change of weather, it brings some uh, sickness or discomfort to our body. Anyway, let's pray that this word of God will nourish us spiritually and also enlighten us somehow what this word of God through Paul and the Thessalonians would speak to us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We honor you. We, we would like to take this moment, God, to hear you. Use me as your vessel, as your mouthpiece, oh God, to, sp to preach the word, to speak the word with power and authority. And it is my prayer that your word will reverberate inside this room and also outside this room, that it would reach, Lord, our community our homes, schools, workplaces, our city, and beyond. Holy Spirit, have your way. Preach the word, O oh God, through me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. We're still in First Thessalonians, but now we are in chapter 2. What makes a church alive? What makes a church alive? Vibrant. Some would say, oh, we have young people, vibrant young people. That would make a church vibrant. What would make a church captivating to people? Maybe lights, good sounds, great musicians, great worship team. That would make a church a a church that is so inviting. What would make a church service riveting? Or maybe a church that has so many programs when the preacher preaches so much illustrations that would, that would tickle my ears, that would make a church riveting. How about you? How would you define a church that is alive? A 
church, it has a building with mezzanine, with coffee shop, where they, where they offer cappuccino, latte, where they, where they offer mochaccino or caramel macchiato or what have you. That's a cool church. That's a successful church. Remember, this church that we've talked about last Sunday, they were just visited by Paul and established by Paul just by three weeks. Because, you know, just to give you another background of First Thessalonians, Paul was visiting with his, of course, companions, Silas and Timothy. They were a team that visited so many cities in modern Turkey during the time that's the Asia Minor, in Galatia, Cappadocia, those cities, and he reached, they also reached the, Gre uh, the, the nation of Greece, in Thessalonica, Corinth, Philippi, all those places. He was visiting those. Just imagine a missionary going from place to place, preaching the gospel. And here when he reached Thessalonica, which is the modern Thessaloniki in Greece, he just preached three weeks because he was persecuted. There was a riot. There was a mob trying to hurt them because they're preaching a gospel of Jesus. They ran to another city, which is in Philippi. We're going to learn that later. Okay? So, just three weeks. But they thrived. Paul received a news from Thessalonians, from Thessalonica, that they were a thriving church, despite of the fact that they were just established by merely three weeks. But they grew. They thrived. That's why Paul wrote the letter, 1 Thessalonians, to them. To encourage them, to thank them, and also to address some issue in order for them to grow. That's why you have 1 Thessalonians on your Bible. Read your Bible. You will learn that. The back, back story of this is in Acts 6, 17. You will learn that, that Paul visited the Thessalonica in Acts 17. All right. Now, again, the question that I asked a while ago, what makes a church alive? Music, drums, keyboard, great hosting, great coffee, great lights, good seats. Perhaps I would like to answer that question based on this book. What makes a church alive, meaningful, purposeful? What makes a church riveting, compelling, captivating? It's because the power of the gospel. It is the gospel. It's not about the size of your membership. It's not about the size of the building. It's not about the color of the carpet. It's not about the media. It's not about if we are in TikTok. It's not about if we are in Instagram. The, the, the church can be called or can be identified or can be, say, can be said that it is alive. It is because of the power of the gospel that is running in the blood, in the life of the church. The question is, is the gospel being preached in this church? If it is not, then we are just playing games with God. So that's the title of our message. Remember, this three-week church thrived and grew. And they were gospel-empowered church. And it is my prayer that this church will become a church that is known for its gospel preaching. All right. So... Does this gospel powerful? What's the gospel, by the way? Do you know what's the gospel? Let's go to the basic. All right. From verse 2, of chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. You know, brothers and sisters, that our visit 
to you was not without results. Okay, Paul, Silas, and Timothy wrote the letter to Thessalonians. He said to the Thessalonian church, who was barely around maybe one year old church, that Paul established for only three weeks. You know, brothers, Thessalonians, sisters, that our visit to you, three weeks of preaching there, was not without result. It means to say there was a result. When they visited the Thessalonians, there was a result, my friend. It is not without a result. A double negation, not without. It means to say positive, meaning there was a result. What, pre what precipitated that result? It is the gospel that, has been, that was preached to them in the face of strong opposition. Verse 2 says there, we had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi. Before coming to the Thessalonica, where Paul and Silas and Timothy preached for three weeks, they came from Philippi. They preached there. If you know your Bible, that's where Paul and Silas were imprisoned. They were preaching the gospel in Philippi. And they were caught and put it in prison. They were stripped naked. And they were bitten by a rod. Imagine that. You would be your clothes will be stripped. And you will be bitten by rods. Imagine that scenario. Imagine that pain, that struggle, persecution, trials that Paul, Silas experienced when they were in Philippi. Before coming to that church, before coming or establishing or preaching the gospel in Thessalonica. Can you imagine that? They were still recuperating from their, from their pain, from their, from their uh, wounds inflicted by these people in Philippi. And now there you are again in Thessalonica, preaching the gospel, the very reason why they were bitten, stripped naked. As you know, but with the help of our God, we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. The gospel was preached in Philippi and also in Thessalonica. That's why there was a result when they visited Thessalonica. It is not because of music. It is not because Paul brought with him a band, a music team. It is not because Paul brought some magician with him, a good preacher or some or teacher or dancer or tambourine dancer with him. That's why there was a result when he visited Thessalonica. It wasn't because they brought some pizza, some burgers or some good food. In Thessalonica, that's not, that the very, that's not the reason why there was not without result. The very reason was the gospel was preached. There was no band during the time. There's no lighting. There's no pulpit. There's no church building during the time. But they grew. They were alive because of the preaching of the gospel. It is the gospel. That made the church, three-week church, thrived and was known to Macedonia and Achaia, northern and southern part of Greece. It's because of the gospel, my friend. Remember, we read it last week with the first chapter. It says there, our gospel came to you not simply with words. Not just storytelling, not just a poetry, not just a heresy, not just a notification from your, from your social media. Or it's not just a random quote from a great thinker, philosopher. But the gospel was not simply with words, but also with power. With the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. It is my prayer right now. Just merely, just merely hearing this word gospel. It's already piercing your heart. It's already convicting you with the power of the Spirit. 
because of the gospel, because the power of the gospel, the gospel has power. It's not just a random word. My friend, the gospel has the power to transform and change lives. That's why Paul, let's hear it from Romans 1.16. This is his letter to the Romans. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Romans, they are great thinkers. They are philosophers. They want rhetoric. They want things that would enhance their knowledge. Sophist, Sophia, philosophy. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. It's not the, the rhetoric. It's not a good explanation, a good story. It's not a good music. It's not a good building. It's not a good food, not good coffee or pizza or burger or what have you. It's not those things that would save mankind. It is the power of the gospel that will bring salvation to everyone, first to the Jews and to the Gentiles. That's what Paul said in Romans 1.16. That's why he's not ashamed to preach the gospel no matter what. And I'm not ashamed to preach the gospel, the truth in this pulpit. Sometimes you would be hurt by, by, by the word, it's okay. It means to say that God loves you. If you're no longer hearing some things that is opposite to your wants or your ways, then you must be perfect. We are imperfect people. That's why we hear words in this pulpit that is opposed to our sometimes thinkings, our ways, our actions. That's why the last letter of Paul before his execution is in 2 Timothy. His very last letter to Timothy, this is what he said. He didn't say, Paul, look at my properties. I'm giving you this land. I'm giving you this, pro this, this, uh, this, this estate. No, it's not. Oh, Paul, take good care of my friends or my or my belongings. No, it's not. This is what he said in his last letter. So do not be ashamed, Timothy, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. He was in prison. He was about to be executed. This was his last word. This was his last word and says, join me. Join with me in the suffering for the gospel. The gospel with his last breath. He asked Timothy to preach the gospel by the power of God. Because that's the power of God. The only thing that could save mankind is the gospel. The gospel. And that's what Thessalonians received. That's why they were empowered by their faith. Because of the gospel. So what's the gospel? You haven't answered the question, Pastor Jim. What is this gospel? What is the gospel? Gospel simply means good news. From Greek word euangelion or in Latin evangelion simply means good news. News. Again, Pastor, what's the good news? Why many people died for that good news? Even Paul was executed, Peter was executed, and many church fathers during the early centuries, they were, they were crucified, cut into two. They were martyred because of this gospel of this good news. What's that good news is all about, Pastor Jude? Why people would give their life? To gospel, to that gospel. And we are the recipient of that gospel. Without that martyrdom of Paul, Peter, and all these missionaries during the early centuries. We don't have the gospel right now. Then we are not saved. We are doomed. What is gospel? What is this good news? Before you know the good news, you have to know what's bad news. There was a bad news. Okay. I'd like to take you back in the Old Testament in Genesis from the very beginning that you are created by God. 
according to his image and likeness. Adam and Eve started it all. They, they started. They had fellowship with God. You can do everything in that garden, but don't eat the fruit in the middle or else you will die. Spiritual meaning, you will be separated from me. And that would be the end of the fellowship of God and Adam and Eve. And because it's very enticing, they were tempted to eat the fruit in the middle. They could ha they have myriads of things to do inside the garden. But the very one thing that God prohibited them to do, they miss it. They did. They sinned. And that separated the plan of God of good things for Adam and Eve was the third, and it was, and that was the fall of man. And because of the God, God loves us. This is the good news. He sent his son, Jesus, to die for the forgiveness of all your sins, of our sins. And the good gospel or good news includes the coming of Jesus, the death of Jesus for your sins. And then on the third day, he rose again for your justification. And now he is seated in the heaven at the right hand of the Father, interceding for Moses. Jose, for Marisel. Jesus is already seated at the right hand of the Father, praying for you, for you, my friend. That's the gospel. We are doomed to hell because of sin. We are separated from God because of our sins. But because of this good news, because of God's love, he died for you, the forgiveness of your sins. But it didn't stop there. He rose back to life to justify you, to declare you righteous. Now he's seated at the right hand of the Father, praying, interceding for you. That's the good news. If we are not preaching this, with the whole context of the Bible, then we are dead, church. If I'm here just to tickle your ears, if I'm here just to make you to, 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 to edify you uh, in the sense that uh, to, to, to pump you up, to make you excited, then I'm doing you a serious disservice. If you, if you would hear in this pulpit just promises, God loves you, God will take care of you, then I'm doing you a great disservice. I am doomed as a pastor, as a preacher. I need to preach the whole counsel of God. Okay? We have a preconceived benchmark that the success of the church can be, can be told as the size of the building, the size of the attendees. But that's not the case. It is the power of the gospel. Let's now start <laughs> the power of the gospel. Let's start again with verse 1 and 2 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Share the gospel with Herod, just like Paul, Silas, and Timothy. Every city that they visited, they were mocked, taunted. They were stripped naked. They mob, riot around them because of this gospel, because people... They didn't want to hear the gospel. Some believed and some obeyed and some became, became Christians, but some also rejected them. But you know what? Paul exemplified how he shared the gospel. It is with courage. You know, brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not without results. There was a result. Again, this is uh, the verse that we have started a while ago. We had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know. But we, with the help of our God, if you're going to preach the gospel, if you're going to share the gospel, there will be a help coming on your way. 
It's not you alone coming to your workplace and you will be mocked and maligned by these people. What, what gospel, what sharing is that now? Come on. It's all right. It's okay. Even Jesus Christ, even Paul and all the apostles, they were mocked. They were maltreated because of their, the preaching of the gospel. But there was a help, help of our God. We dare to tell you his gospel in the face of his strong opposition. Expect opposition if you're going to do the right thing. If you're going to obey the word of God, expect opposition from the, from, from the enemy, from Satan. He would use people, circumstances, your health, your money, your family. The enemy might use all those things in order for you to, to, to be deterred in preaching the gospel. Oh, it's scary, Pastor John. It's okay. There's a help coming your way. Be courageous in sharing the gospel. If you have discovered the, 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 the cure for, for, this, for this cancer, for this thing, 100% cure, would you withhold this? Would you keep it as a secret and not share it to others? No, my friend, brothers and sisters, Lavish Presence Church members and family and brothers and sisters, you have already discovered the key to salvation. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ that he died and rose again for the sins of the world that you might be justified. Would you keep it as a secret and not share it to your classmates, to your workmates, to your family, to your dad, to your mom? Or would you keep it to yourself? Come on, because of your fear, because of your doubt, what would people say to me? I am, they would say that I am uh, a fool person. I, they would say that I am a martyr or some, I don't have. I don't want to hear any negative things from my friends, from my family. That's why I don't want to share. Come on, be courageous. The very thing that you that save you is the same thing that would save them. Share the gospel with courage, my friend. Because it is the power of God to salvation. I am not ashamed of that, Paul said. Are you ashamed? What if those people who brought the gospel to you were ashamed? So you are still doomed to damnation. If you share the gospel with courage, my friend, there would be a result if you're going to preach and share the gospel. Later on, I will tell you, I will teach you how to share the gospel in a very, very simple way. Secondly, because of the power of the gospel, we had to share the gospel with pure motives. It says here, for the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives. It's very explicit. Paul said, come on, what I'm telling is not from, er from, from, from error. I'm sure of it that it is right because it transformed and changed my life because it's not an error. And I, and I experienced Jesus himself. And I experienced the transformation. And now I am preaching the gospel with pure motives. Again, not impure. Again, another double negation. Sometimes it gives us more, 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 more uh, clarity. Because try, Paul was trying to say not impure, not from error. So it means to say it is Pure motive. When you share the gospel, make sure it is not from impure motive. Because during that time, the Paul's false teachers were trying to discredit Paul. Because imagine after preaching three weeks, they left Thessalonians. Oh, that's why those false teachers, those who were against them, said, you see, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, those who preached to you, they just stayed here for three weeks. So now we're there. Where, 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 they, where, where were they? So see, they are just some, they have impure motive. They didn't get what they want, want from you. That's why they left right away. So they're trying to manipulate the mind of this Thessalonian church. Because during that time, there were many false teachers, preachers, itinerant preachers going around. They're not preaching the gospel, but they're preaching their philosophies. That's why they're tricking 
the church. This new church, they were being tricked by these false teachers. But Paul said, he's just trying to prove the veracity of his apostleship, his preaching, and his being, being a preacher to them and a father to them. We are not tricking you. We have pure motives. We're not trying to trick you. When you share the gospel, don't try to trick your people. Your, your, even your, your parents, even your mom, don't trick them. Preach with pure motives and you will see the power of God working in their lives. If you're going to share the gospel for your own, for your own personal uh, motive, then who would be applauded? Who would be It's not you who would be changing these people. It is God. Therefore, use the gospel with pure motives. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. He is so convinced that he was approved by God because he is convinced that what he's preaching, Paul was preaching the gospel. That's why he is, was convinced that he, he was entrusted with the gospel, approved by God. We are not trying to please people. Don't please someone else. Don't, oh, Pastor Jerry, I need to please Pastor Jerry because he said that uh, I should preach the gospel or share the gospel to my workmates or my dad. That's why I need to please him. No, don't please me. If you're going to please me, then he won't last. Just, just, uh, just, just one rejection, you would, you would write away, oh, no, I give up. But if you're going to please him, because I want to please you, Lord. I want to please you, Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, the one who saved me. I'm going to share this gospel to my, to my seatmate, to my classmate, to this person, this stranger, to the restaurant, coffee shop. I don't know. I'm, I want, Lord, to share the gospel with pure motives because I want to please you, God. You know we're, we're, we never use flattery. Nor did we put a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. Don't not, so do not use flattery words just to convince the people. Because the word of God himself, the gospel itself, has the power to transform and change. It's not your flowery words. It's not your flattery words that could convince or transform the lives of your children or your family or your what have you. It is the power of the gospel. Don't, so don't use flattery words. Don't, just fl don't use flowery words. Just straight to the point. Share the gospel as it is. And let the Holy Spirit work in that person. Don't put on mask. During, during that time, there are there are people who are who are putting masks when they, when they when they when they when they preach because of greed. They want money. They want money. You know the the one reason that why Paul was being mocked by these false teachers, by this. They call it charlatans. Charlatans, they are paid preachers, paid orators, paid speakers. Because Paul was, wasn't uh, charging them with, with pay. That's why people, these false teachers, say, you see Paul charging you for free? So it means to say he, he, wasn't, just, he wasn't a good speaker or teacher. Because the more you, you, you charge people with a high pay, pay during the time, it means to say you are more you're a great preacher or teacher or, or, or orator. But if you're going to charge them free, it means to say you are a low level or you're nothing. You are, you are not a good teacher. That's why these charlatans, these speakers, itinerant speakers, they're charging people more money. That would give them more uh, credibility because they're charging money. But Paul, they're charging he, he was charging them for free because it's the gospel that would change and transform and save people. He's preaching with pure motives. That's why in this church, in your life group, in your family, in your small group, you have to preach the word. You have to share the word together with pure motives. Not to say, oh, I am better than you. Oh, I am more uh, 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 learned than you. No, no, that's not the point. The point is because we have the gospel that we need to share to one another, to other people, to strangers, to newcomers. We have to share the gospel because there is power in the gospel with pure motives, okay? Without any personal agenda. Second, because the power of the gospel in the church, it means to say it would be shared with gentleness. 
You see, Paul said here, we are not looking for, for, for praise, for praise from people. No, it's not. Not from you, anyone else. Even though as apostles of Christ, we could have asserted our authority. Meaning to say, Paul was, a, was an apostle. He has a position. He could have used that position to manipulate the people for them to listen. But he didn't use that. Though he was an apostle. Don't say that you're a manager from your workplace. Don't say that you are a dad and you're going to manipulate your son, your daughter. Oh, come on, read the gospel. Listen, listen to the gospel. Listen, obey it. Accept the Lord. No, you're, you're, you're trying to manipulate them. You are trying to assert yourself using your authority. Though that's wrong. You have to be said. Instead, we were like young children. Young children, they have pure motives. They have a right, they have right, they have right heart. They won't think of disadvantaging people. That's why when you share the gospel, you should have a, a heart of a child with gentleness. Right? Don't force something to this person because you don't use your voice. This is the word of the Lord. You have to obey it or else you will be doomed. You will, be, you will, you will go to hell. No, you don't have to do that. Let the Holy Spirit convict them no matter how how. Push your voice, you, you, you raise your voice to your children and receive the word or make them change. You can't change your children. Remember that. Even though you do, you do all these things, raise and spank or, or give them a, a silent treatment or don't give them uh, money. Don't buy them shoes or new clothes or confiscate their, their, their cell phones. You can change them. You would just make them more resistant. Let the gospel transform and change your children. Or vice versa, your parents. Pray for them. And you know what? The gospel should embody the character of God. Because God is gentle. So show gentleness to your children and to your parents. And let's see, let them see God. Through your actions. Because you're preaching the gospel to them. Therefore, let them see the character of God. And that gospel in their future. So be in this church. Let, like, let us be like these children. Who has pure motives. With gentleness. Let's be gentle to one another. Because we are brothers and sisters here. Paul repeatedly mentioned the word brothers and sisters. Therefore, we have to be gentle to one another in sharing the gospel. Even to the newcomers, people, random people, strangers at your workplace or what have you. Be gentle in preaching the gospel. Thirdly, the power of the gospel should be shared with compassion. And the second part of, of verse 7 says, just as a nursing mother cares for her children. Wow, moms. Compassionate moms, mother. When they see their children sick, it, they could literally get the pain, that struggle, that sickness, and suffer it for themselves. They would do that. Because moms, they're so compassionate. They want to get everything from their children just for them to alleviate the pain, the struggle that they have been experiencing. Just like us, because we want these this people, this friend, this even your classmates or workmates, if you, because you have, if you, are so, you have this compassion to them like a mom, because you know that they will be doomed to hell if they will not hear the gospel, then you should have this compassion. So we cared for you. You care for this person. You cared for this friend. That's why you preach the gospel to them. You share the gospel to them. Because we love you so much. Moms, they love their children so much. The same way you should have that kind of compassion and love for the lost. Even those, your, those, enemies, those enemies of yours. Even those in, in your workplace or classmates that are so mean to you. You should have this love for them. Again, love is not emotion. It doesn't mean that you have to give them coffee, give them flowers. No, it's not that way. It means to say it's your own volition. It's your own decision to do a good work to them because that's the love of God. 
When you say you love God, you do good things. You obey what God tells you to say, to do. Sorry, to say yes. So it means you say, come on, you should have this compassion when you share the gospel. And that's what Paul, Silas, and Timothy had when they preached the gospel in Thessalonica. They felt the love, the compassion from these three people. That's why they received the gospel with power because it was preached with courage. It was preached with pure motive. It was preached with compassion. It, was, it also says here, surely you remember, oh no, sorry, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel, not only the gospel, not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. You have to share your life, your life to one another here as we continue to live out the gospel of God in this church. And as we live it out to other people around us, let us also offer our lives to them. That's compassion. Surely you remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and hardship. We work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone else, anyone, while we preach the gospel of, you, of God to you. See, Paul wasn't getting the, charging them free. They're not asking them money to pay them. They were working night and day as tent makers so that they would not be a burden to the, to the church and that they established in Thessalonica. Because he wanted to be a blessing to them. But it's also, it's, it, there's nothing wrong uh, paying the preachers or pastors. Because in Philippi, Paul was paid by the church. Because the church wanted pa Paul to preach, to, to focus on preaching and leading the church. That's why he was paid and he, did, he didn't need to work as a tent maker. See, because of this mom working so hard, wanted to express his love to people, sharing the gospel. Moms didn't want to be a burden to people, to their children. Just like us. We don't want people to burden with the gospel. We, need, we want them to receive the gospel with power that they may be changed. Wow, there's so many points here. The last point that I have today is share the gospel, but later, there's a bonus later on. Share the gospel with life examples. So let's review. First, we have to preach the gospel with courage because you would experience and encounter opposition. Therefore, you have to be courageous when you are determined to preach the gospel. Also, with pure motives. Because you could preach it with the wrong motive, then that's not a very powerful way of sharing the gospel. Make sure, Lord, I want to have a pure motive in preaching the gospel so that this person would receive this person, Lord and Savior. And next is we have to share it with gentleness. Be gentle in preaching and sharing the word of God. It's so important. And also with compassion. And last is we have to share the gospel with live example. You are a witness. Paul was saying to this Thessalonians, you witnessed it, right? You witnessed, you saw that, you saw us, right? You saw what we did when we visited you. As if he was trying to, to, to pin them down. No, you see, you see, you saw that, you saw, you're a witness. Meaning to say, what they witnessed is what they, what Paul, Silas, and Timothy showed them. Because Paul, Silas, and Timothy became witnesses as well. They witnessed the character of God and, and the Thessalonian church witnessed it, saw it. And so is God of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you. You've seen how holy, how blameless, how we were among you. For you know that we dealt with each as a father. And now he used this familiar word, language, with his father. He first used children, like children, like mom, and now father. When we share the gospel to one another or to other people, we should be like fathers. The most uh, watch person inside the house is the father. The daughter, the son, they would watch the father. They're their heroes. My mom, she is the light of our family. My dad, he is my hero. Dads, what would you show to your children? Show them how to pray. Show them how to read the Bible. Show them how to treat ladies. Show them how to treat their 
boys, show them how to treat finances, show them how to treat the church, show them how to respect the elderly people, show them how to obey parents, dads. This is just an example. Meaning to say, dads are example. It's to say, as a father, we showed you how to be a fa- as a father by encouraging, comforting, urging you to live lives worthy of God. When we share the gospel, we should be accompanied by life examples. Urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. In this church, we want to preach the gospel. But we also would like to live it out, to act it out, to put it into practice. We are not just talkers, but we are doers. We are not just listeners, but we are, we are doers of what we hear. We live it by example. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes what we hear from the word is so painful. Oh, I don't want to share it because it's painful. No, if it is what the word tells us, we have to share it. Because God hates sin, but loves the sinner. They say church that they say that God, uh, church hates homosexuals. They say the church hate drunkards. They say the church hates uh, uh, sexual immoralities. No, we, well, we don't hate them. What Jesus hates is the action, the practice. We don't hate the drunkards. We hate what, what, what the, the result of drunkenness to the family, to your finances, to your business, to your relationship. That's what, that's what God hates. And he, he, he preaches against that. God doesn't hate sexual immorals. He hates the sexual immoralities, the action, the, 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 the practice. We cannot circumvent it. But the Bible tells us we have to obey it. Any sexual immoralities, God hates that. We you know that. In Galatians, you cannot enter the kingdom of sexual immorality. Anything outside marriage is a sexual immorality. That's according to the Bible. Gumblers, God doesn't hate gumblers. He hates what's the result of that gumbling that would that would bring that would that would bring to the family, to this person. You know, you know what I mean? We love people here. And we want people to hear the gospel. And the gospel is the truth. The whole counsel of God. I hope you're getting this. If you're only hear me preaching hype words again, I must say I am doing you a great disservice. I might as well be a motivational speaker. And maybe I could earn more money from that. You know what? When you preach the gospel, when Paul, Silas, Timothy preached the gospel, they were hated. Because many people were hurt when they preached the gospel. I'm sure I have, I have hurt so many people in this church since I started preaching. When was that? 2007, I guess. Because the truth hurts. The truth hurts. But if you're hurt by the pulpit, by the word, you should be thankful because God is speaking to you personally. It's a very serious matter here today. Because that's the gospel. We don't want to water down the gospel. Because when you say Christ died for all your sins, yes, he died for all our sins. For all my sins, for all your sins. And what I want is, Lord, when I see you face to face, 
I want to say, Lord, that uh, I have walked the talk. I didn't, I didn't just preach the gospel and live otherwise. Yeah? Share the gospel with li life examples. There is power in the word of God. There is power in the gospel. The point of the gospel is God loves us. God is not condemning us. God is not judging us. He's judging the sin. He wants us. He wants to mend the broken heart. He wants to mend the fracture. He wants to, 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 to restore the lost hopes. He wanted to, to, to heal the, the wounds inflicted to you by your past. That's the gospel. That God is dealing our sin. So we need to share the gospel. Who wants to learn how to share the gospel? Who wants to learn how to share the gospel? So easy. It's so easy. It's so easy. Share the gospel. Go, go. Tell yourself. Pastor Jim told me this, eh, to share the gospel. But he didn't give me a, a tool. Here, here's the tool right now. Remind yourself, go, go. Oh, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm afraid. Moises, go, go. Macho, go, go. Tell yourself, go, go. What is go, go? Echo, go, go. Share the gospel, go, go. Okay, go, go. This is how you should share the gospel. A very simple way of sharing the gospel would be First G, let's learn that what's G. What's G all about? It's God's love. You can find it in John 3, 16. And you could also use other verses that could teach us and tell us, that could tell us that God loves us. First is G of go-go, God's love. Tell this person, and I'm telling you right now, God loves you. Or tell your friend, God loves you. Tell these sinners, God loves you. Tell this drunkard, God loves you. Tell this gambler, God loves you. Tell this, tell this uh, re re rebel person, God loves you. Tell this Im sexual immoral person, sex homosexual person, God loves you. And they might say, huh? God loves me? I don't feel it. I don't understand it. Why if God, what, if God loves me, why my life is wreck? Why my life is mess? Why? Why? Because there is a condition, our condition. The very reason you are not experiencing, enjoying the love of God in your life is because of sin. Romans 3.23 says, for, the, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You and I, your best friend, your kindest granddad or mom, they're also guilty of sin. Because the Bible tells us, Romans 3, 3, 23, for all, for all have seen and fall short of the glory of God. All of us, from Adam and Eve up to now, we are all sinners. That's the very reason you don't experience and enjoy the love of God. Because something is separating you from God. The sin that we inherited from Adam and Eve, that we are also having right now without relationship with God. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world. And you don't experience that because of our condition. Therefore, we need to do something with this condition in order for us to experience the love of God. So go, go. First is God loves. Tell that person that God loves him or her. And the reason that he's not experiencing it because there's a, there, our condition of being a sinner. And G is, it stands for God's response, because of His love, He would respond to your condition. He won't let you suffer and not enjoy His love. He needed to do something out of it. And it says in Romans 5.8, He wanted to demonstrate His love in John 3.16. He wanted to demonstrate that. In Romans 5.8 says, God demonstrated His love for us while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. He died for us. Why? To pay for our sins so that we won't be, we no longer 
be separated from God, but we will be reconciled to God. That's the response of God. Because of that, we also need to respond. Our response, John 1.12, those who received Him was given the right to be children of God. You see, that's how you could share the gospel so easy. Easily. You see, go, go. First, God's love and then our condition. God's response, our response. If you would receive what God offers, according to John 1.12, you will become a child of God. You, you, get, you get the idea? You can take a photo of that. Bring it wherever you go. If you have a chance at a coffee shop, workplace, come on, go, 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 go. Go, go, Joyce. Go, go, save. Go, go, Henry. Go, go. Go, 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 go. Do not be afraid because God is with you. God will help you. Just like Paul, Silas, and Timothy. Share the God's love. God loves you, my friend. But you have a condition. Our condition, we are separated from God because of sin. Because we need to ask for forgiveness. Isn't that the response of God? That He died for all your sins. All you have to do is to receive Him and accept Him. And I would like to offer that to you right now. If you are unsure of your relationship with God, if you don't experience the meaning of love of God to you and to your family, you don't really experience, enjoy it. You feel God today and tomorrow, no. You up and down with your faith with God because you are not sure of this. I'm telling you right now, God loves you. He will do anything for you. But there's a condition. Your condition separates you from God. You have sin. You have to confess all your sins. All your sins. Not some few. Not this part of my, my life, Pastor June. But all, all. 1 John 1, 9 says, if you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive you from all your unrighteousness, from all your sins. Whatever it is, you have to ask for forgiveness for, for, all, for all your sins. And God died for all those sins. Your past, present, and future sin, God died for those sins. And all you have to do right now is John 1, 12. Receive the offer of God. Receive God in your life as your personal Lord and Savior. And that's it. And pray for that person. Pray for that person. And I would like to pray for you right now. If you would like to really offer your life to Jesus and experience the love of God right now, I would like to challenge you to receive Him. Please all stand. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity that we could hear the power of God through the gospel. That is the power for salvation in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, pierce our hearts. I pray, oh God, that each and every person in this room will not, will, won't go home without the gospel in their hearts. That we would all go out, Lord, carrying, Lord, the forgiveness and the salvation that you have offered. And we are going to share it to other people. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you're that person who wanting to experience the love of God in your life, you have to confess your sins. You have to accept Jesus Christ's offer of forgiveness. Because He died for all your sins. And today, you, have to you need to receive Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Repeat this prayer with me. Jesus, I want to experience your love. And right now, I have a condition of sinfulness. Please forgive me. I want to confess all my sins right now. Help me to turn away from all my sins. Give me, Jesus, the power to resist temptations and sins. Please forgive me. And right now, I confess all those sins. opening my heart to you. I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. 
welcome you to my life. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you are now at peace with God. You are now at peace with God. You were once shattered. become a light like a beacon that would reflect the strength and the light and the love of God to people around you. You're no longer a loser but you are a victorious Christian in Christ right now. The old has gone and the new has come. God loves you and that, 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 that love will continue to reflect God bless you as you live your new life in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I hope that you receive the gospel today, church. Don't be afraid to go out there and share the gospel. I know some of you already know I'm afraid to share the gospel. There you are again, Pastor Jim Todd, asked how to share the gospel. I don't want that. It's not my cup of tea. Come on, church. Remove that preconceived idea that you would be rejected right away by someone who you, who you would approach or what later on. Come on. Have this heart desire when you go out. Lord, I am saved. I, you have saved me. I want to share the gospel, the good news that I received from you. Say the prayer as you go out of this room. Share the gospel. Go, go. Go, go.